this year is Heathrow's 75th birthday. Springing into life as London Airport back in 1946, there were a mere 63,000 passengers passing through its doors. Since then, nearly two and a half billion travellers have traversed these terminals, with up to 76,000 staff working to keep the airport open. Good morning, sir. Welcome to Heathrow. 24-7. Today, with aviation still getting back on its feet, the time has come for Heathrow's last temporarily closed terminal to reopen. Once home to nearly a thousand departures a week, Terminal 4 is now opening its doors exclusively to arriving red list passengers. You must come over, please. Dusting down his suit after 18 months on furlough is passenger experience manager New Man. I've totally missed the buzz of the airport. How are you, right? Hi, guys, you right? How are you, right? I'm a very sociable person, so I had a very good relationship with the passengers. I miss it, I miss it. Badly. I've got to make up for lost time. When the bad come, I'll come and give you a call if you want to have a seat. Yeah, it's just it's water. New man is going to need all of his social skills today. Not only does he have to keep across the conveyor belt of ever-changing travel rules, but he has a terminal full of tired passengers who are going to spend 10 days in a quarantine hotel. I'm coming back to a different terminal, different ways of working. I say different terminal because we're not operating how we used to. Every day we come in, we're getting emails and something that's new that's changed or a new, a new process that we're going to have to implement, and that's a humongous challenge. Oh, now we've gone on the back. I'm waiting for an hour. It's doing my head in now. Because this is a joke. All coming off the plane at the same time? No. I've had enough. Ikra, what's going on here today? Talk to me, talk to me. Let me help you. I've landed. There's been weeks. There has been a change with Red List and Amber List, because that only changed two days ago. So I'm guessing that could be the issue. I just need to go and find out what's happened over here. These passengers have flown in from a red list country, but they went via Dubai, which is amber, so were landed at Terminal 3. This whole terminal will come from red list, so it's not a problem. You can go sit opposite belt number nine. They were then transferred here to Terminal 4. However, their luggage appears to be missing. Where the flights come from, it hasn't separated red list and amber bags on this occasion that could be 50 bags so the bags have to be physically picked up through the baggage tag put onto a vehicle to then be brought over here no, really three hours. i understand i do apologize this it's, is a new process that heathrow is going through at the minute the packages have been left on the plane are hours that's all they have to do collect everything and then bring it here it is a bit upsetting for us all of it it's just so 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 unfair yeah. if i was in your position I I could, I, I, yeah, you'll be very patient you'll be very patient i do appreciate that with the amount of, of money I'm paying, I should have expected my bags to be ready by now. So hold on, probably. Um, I'll come and make, I'll make an announcement with everyone in a while. Yeah, you're able to come to the reclaim hall, I'm going to need your assistance. What's up, buddy? I've got some passengers here that are obviously quite irate at the moment, and I'm struggling with them. New man now needs to orchestrate a cross-terminal bag hunt to reunite these passengers with their belongings. Out on Heathrow's perimeter road, one man who regularly carries around other people's packages has just started his shift. Very busy day today, yep. You never know what you're going to get on the airport. Cargo driver Dylan. They tell you this is coming at this time, it's coming at that time. Everything's been moved around, so you never know. Never a dull moment. As well as commanding cargo, Dylan also happens to be a dab hand at commanding minds. As a comedy stage hypnotist, one thing you get used to is anything can happen at any time. So you've got to be ready to just change into, you know, a different routine or work on a particular volunteer. We're going to be picking up some cargo uh, for a flight that's going to India. Not exactly sure at the moment. It could be anything. It could be anything. In response to the pandemic, Heathrow worked with airlines to increase dedicated cargo flights. Last year, over 20,000 freight-only aircraft flew in and out of the airport, most carrying vital medical supplies across the world. The cargo is oxygen tanks that are going to India. So you can imagine it, really important cargo. 
yeah, major job satisfaction knowing that we're taking this sort of thing over to a country that's desperately needing it. No, no, I'm part of this. That's really, really uh, humbling. Like many countries, including the UK, India has had to battle two waves of devastating infections, suffering ongoing shortages of medical supplies Every assignment of oxygen to India is life-saving. Well, I believe that the uh, flight has landed in now, so we are a little bit off schedule, a little bit late. I mean, we've got vital cargo on board, so a bit of pressure, don't hurt. Cargo delivery slots are time-sensitive, and often a delay of just a few minutes could mean the airline potentially losing its allocated departure. That's when, you know, you're in trouble. Transporting medical oxygen cylinders requires following strict guidelines under the Dangerous Goods Act due to their highly flammable nature. When you're driving a cargo that you know, like the oxygen tanks we've got on board, it makes you more vigilant with, like, looking around. You want to make sure that you're more careful. So no donuts, no handbrake turns. That's well out. Steady. Keeps us on our toes. With most of the cargo already in the belly of the plane, the race is on. Obviously, I'm not going to speed, but we need to sort of get there a bit sharpish. Uh, it's testing me now a little bit. If found responsible for the late delivery of goods that then impacts an aircraft's departure time, cargo companies could face substantial fines. The pressure's starting to build a bit. The god of the traffic lights keeping them red when you're in a hurry. Mind over matter, Dylan. Mind over matter. OK, we're on stand. 244. Ah, here's our plane. Let's see if we get the uh, finger tapping sign. Oh, dear. There's the finger tapping. Made it on time, right? The important cargo is going to go, so that's good. There is uh, a real honour in doing it as well, you know. Emergency aid loaded and on track for its 4,500-mile journey to India. Happy day, so it's just down to the pilot now to get there, you know, safely. Life-saving mission accomplished. When you live and breathe safety, Heathrow is a dream place to work. And for airside Rachel, a potential safety crisis lurks around every corner. Have you looked at it this morning, checked your lights and everything? Yeah. Is someone going to stand on the other side to make sure they don't yes. go into the clearway? Is that all right? Have you got your driving permit and your ID, please? Passengers getting off safely? Yeah, absolutely, and they're putting the barriers out to make sure that no passenger walks towards the airfield. Are you finished? You off? I'm just going to drop the Wessex off to the triangle. OK, so that's a good job so far. Thank you. We need to keep it up. I think we don't already do. I know, I know. But, you know, I like to give you praise now and again, not just how you are. During today's inspection of the airfield and its apron, something is sticking out like a sore thumb. I should be the uh, leader of... What have you spotted, Rachel? So there's a little nice mute parked oh, up. Um, all mutes should have permission to to park airside and um, that's overhanging the parking bay so let's go and investigate what uh, what that's about. A mute that's mobile elevated work platform is used to gain access to places where a ladder just can't cut it. Well, as you can see, it's not in the road, and um, the issue is that any large vehicle it is in the possibility of hitting it. Also, anything like this needs to have permission, it needs a ramp space, and I don't know, I'm, but I'm just going to give Sophie a ring and see if Sophie knows anything first. MUPs are regulated by the Government Health and Safety Committee with each vehicle having distinct markings or serial numbers, similar to your car's registration plate. Hello, only me, just very quickly. You don't know of anyone asking for a mute to park up against the building on um, 331? 
No? Okay, cool. All right, speak to you in a bit. Bye bye, bye bye. Hello. Hello, only me. If I give you a registration number of a mute, could you see who it belongs to? Because it's illegally parked in T3 and it's not in a, not in a parking bay. All right, no worries. Thank you. Thanks. Right. Popsicles. Why is it popsicles? Because nobody knows. I don't know this company, to be fair. So it so might be... Sure? I, mean, you, you... I know everything I know. But however, I don't know this company. But it's not long before Rachel's dogged detective skills pay off. Hello, you've got a mute in T3. OK, um, you haven't asked us for permission to park it here. And not only that, but it's actually not in a parking bay. I mean, who left it here? Right, no, that's fine. What I need you to do then, is someone able to move it today? All right, fantastic. All right, thank you, thank you. Bye-bye. Not only is this badly parked MUPA danger to passing vehicles, it's also blocking space commonly used for aircraft stand equipment. And if it's not moved, it could hold up an incoming flight. Right, so, the update. We've actually spoke to the gentleman that's hired the piece of kit. They didn't realise it was parked here. We'll come back later to see if they've moved it. Heathrow has one of the most sophisticated baggage sorting networks in the world. Capable of handling over 11,000 bags an hour. Its robotic digital technology ensures a smooth and seamless delivery from plane to belt. But not today. In Terminal 4, 24 red list passengers are minus 50 bags. That's not good, sir. How can we send here four hours? I understand. I do apologize. The luggage belonging to these passengers is still in Terminal 3, where they originally landed, and it's now down to passenger experience manager New Man to sort it out. There's not enough seats for people to sit. No food, no drink, no nothing. <laughs> They're happy to sort out something more. We've been waiting here for, what, about two and a half hours, I suppose. Not in a very good mood at the moment, I must admit. This is a new process. That we, we, we just need to get in. Obviously, teething problems with it. It's not something that we've been doing for a long time. Faced with a terminal full of tired and weary passengers pining for their belongings, new man turns to the most powerful tool at his disposal, communication. EK001 is about 24 passengers. Who's, whose number is that? Yep. If you, if you can make your way down, that would be appreciated. Go ahead. You know anything about this... Um... Hi, hi, hi. I was supposed to come in this morning. Yeah, stand by. Hello, Hello, I'm speaking. Communication's key with everything. you just got to try and relate the best you can and understand what they need. If they're not aware of what's going on, then they're going to get all right. They're going to get angry. Come on, Mr. Bone Call as well. How many boats can you carry Um, We could have three, so I have a, my personal number, my work personal number, plus the duty number and a radio. Let's not forget that. First appearing in 1984, Hello, are... today almost two-thirds yeah. of the planet own a mobile phone. Thankfully, one of Newman's plethora of devices has delivered some good news. Just for further update, it'll be about 15, 20 minutes for the bags to arrive now. The bags have been located and are currently on the route here. It looks like we've got some movement. Oh, I see some bags. I see some bags. That's a relief. A lot happier now, yeah. Boy. <laughs> Received two, two more to go. <laughs> You've got all your bags there, yeah? Again, I've, I can't apologise enough for the situation you've had to face. Yes. Hopefully it will never happen again, and hopefully we'll be out of this pandemic soon enough and that we don't have to be in these sort of situations. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you very much for your patience. Thank you. Thank you for sorting me. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.
I mean, that's remarkable. The lady's waited four hours and she's still saying thank you at the end of it. I like, that's, that's what you call patience. Good news. I'm going. The fact that they've all left with their bags, every single one of them, that to me is a win. I mean, it could have gone a lot worse, but I think communication helped and saved the day. Thank you so much for your help. Thank you very much. Over the last 75 years, Heathrow has served as a gateway to the world, increasing its connecting flights year on year, making it a true mega hub. However, with the recent break in service, passengers can get out of practice when it comes to connecting from one flight to another. Gotta go. And sometimes they require the help of the aviation police. Uh, we've got a male breach to coaching gate security and he's onto the apron. Oh, my word. Uh, where? Main terminal, terminal two, catching gate. Go. Right down here. To this one? Yeah, straight down here. You'll come to us. All right, fellas. What we got? Going Hello. back. I came down to have a look what's going on, and uh, I met the airside safety guys. Yeah. yeah. They told me that there was a white male. He was wandering about here, and they were alerted by uh, one of the handlers. Description here as follows: one IG white male, absolutely five foot ten, wearing shirt and light colour. The report was that they'd come down to the coaching gates and had come out where the public are only really allowed when they're boarding a bus. There's no buses here, and he's been spotted by staff, um, and they thought, well, the public shouldn't be there, so then he's unlawfully airside. So we need to try and find that person, find out why they're there, see if there's any offences, see if there's any threat to the airport. Yeah, so all units looking for this, uh, this male. It appears that he's been trying to get his coach to T5, he's been escorted back inside, and so at that point he's then pressed the emergency door release to come back out. Which is a bit of a concern. It is, and he's panicking about getting his flight, that's okay. what about. So we need to make sure we've got, we've got people at five, let's see if we can catch him there. Yeah. Terminal 5 is the biggest terminal in Britain, but with CCTV, passenger experience managers and airside safety, it's difficult to disappear. Think so. Oh, good. Yeah, take a photo of what's happening. We can uh, identify with the uh, handlers. No, not him. Okay, thank you. What's name? Got an image now, sir. Okay, so it definitely wasn't the same person. So, how many people have we got in T5? Because that's where he's gone. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's over there. Yeah, thank you for that image. He's Brad, mate. Yeah. Ross is over there coordinating the T5 yeah. and everyone's over there. Okay, good. If they can't find the passenger, it will be a full security breach that could not only delay departures, but also mean serious consequences for the individual concerned. On the other side of the apron, another investigator is considering the consequences for a naughty new badly parked outside a terminal. Well, I think usually when um, I've ended up having words with someone, they tend to... Um, Want to want to assist? They don't normally want to be back in their dog house as such. Be it Rachel's diplomatic demeanour or something else, it appears the nuke has been moved. Thanks for coming. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Did you have to come far? From Lewis. Oh no. Yeah, kind of hours, but. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. Yeah, don't worry about it. It needs to be done. It should have been. Should I mean, be... you could see where it was. Yeah, yeah. We, I'll take some pictures. It should have been put there in the first place. It was. I'm going to pass the white line, so I understand that you should have been left there, so no problem at all. Cool, you happy with it, yeah? Perfect, yeah, no, that's okay. absolutely fine. I'll check it we'll authorise the permit for that. OK, thank you very much. That's all right. Cheers, everybody. There you go, success, very nice man. Um, so he's just, bless his heart, driven two hours to move it, but he understands the importance of it. Good end to the story. As the driver heads back to the M25 for his two-hour return trip, Outside Terminal 2, teams of police officers are searching the apron for a missing passenger, lost on his way to a connecting flight. Light coloured khaki shorts and glasses, uh, carrying a rucksack, and he's uh, travelling alone, over. Right, 
Yes. Just confirm you've you've got a positive. You've got him. Oh yeah, 100. All right, right. Ross has got him. Ross 100 percent has got him. Okay. Ross please, got him. please run scene. Please run scene. Good. Okay. Thanks, Josh. He's going to escort him back through rescreening while we have that chat about what uh, okay. what to do. Okay. So. Right, so there's 100, 100 yeah, there's body and bag screening, yeah. and then we've got to see if there's any offences. Yeah. Before he can board his flight, the passenger will have to be re-screened and submitted to a full background check. Uh, if you're happy with his, uh, with what he says at that end and checks are all good, then, mate, I think we can allow him to fly. We've got no offences. We've got no offences at this end, mate. Everything's OK. Thank you very much. Thanks so much. Cheers, Cheers, no problem. Don't want to see you again today. Yeah. <laughs> hey, start one of those days. One of those days. OK, I'll catch you later. Cheers, no problem. What you're supposed to do is take a photograph of the spinach. The regulation has changed so often, people don't exactly know what they're meant to be doing. We've already lost the hotel money. They're just mocking us now, look. They're absolutely mocking us, look. Coming up later, Ashley Banjo goes on a personal journey into his past in a brand new documentary here on ITV. Part of Black History Month, Ashley Banjo, Britain in black and white is at nine o'clock. Before that, though, it's Love Your Garden. Next.